Hello everyone and welcome to Hazelwood. It's an international friendly England under 20s against the Springbok women live from London Irish Rugby Club here in Surrey. It is a cold day at the end of November. We have been blessed with beautiful sunshine so far in this English winter time. Alas, the temperature has dropped. Some people have come appropriately dressed, others haven't. Um, I've got gloves on. My co-commentator joining me has got the most fantastic warm coat, but no gloves. And as a result, she's wrapped up in that jacket like a sleeping bag. But Zinke, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? Thank you so much for having me, Dave. Um, I'm good, thanks. Just besides the cold, I guess I'm well. Oh, we'll send an SOS to try and get you a cup of tea. Um, but massive opportunity for some of the young players in the South Africa squad today with a few caps, some uncapped completely and they've got a chance to go against England in the 20s today and a chance to put their hand up and show what they can do in the Springbok jersey. Definitely um, Dave, another huge game for the ladies out there. Um, um, the, the process never stops, I mean this is a great opportunity to actually have a chance to play. I mean there's a lot of girls that we left behind at home and I believe for the youngsters here yeah, are really privileged enough to actually have this opportunity and um, hopefully they'll grab it with both hands and yeah, pick their hands up like you said. How's the tour been so far? Uh, the tour has been going well, I guess, besides the cold, like you said. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm guessing the ladies are actually getting used to it. And um, yeah, it, it's so many positives, um, starting from the France game up until um, the Welsh um, game. And obviously today, hopefully, there'll be a lot of positive to put in our box as well. And going forward, we can just walk onto those as well. Because of course rugby is a results game and ultimately when people look back historically they will see the score lines and, and you've not been on the right side of the ledger on these tours but I know you'll have set your own targets coming into the tour, things that you want to achieve um, both players individually and as a team and as a forwards unit and a backs unit. Are you close to where you think you should be at the moment? Yeah, very much close, um, Dave. And yeah, obviously we always competing against the players that are actually playing each and every week um, as compared to us, but that is not really a, a runaway or getaway kind of thing for us as well. So we've had an opportunity to play um, three, it's, this is now the third week in a row. So I'm guessing we're getting somewhere, we're getting um, the target to actually um, get to play more games, especially against the um, be best team in the world and that I guess that's where you actually get to learn more more of rugby as well so we close to somewhere yeah. well the players are on their way out South Africa led by Katha Jacobs in fact it's two open side flankers leading the teams today Maisie Allen the captain for England let's take a look at the team sheets then while the players take the field of play today. It's England under 20s versus South Africa live from Hazelwood. Starting with England. We've got six of the Premier 15s teams represented today. It's Kill Wardby and Clifford in the front row. Campion and Antwist, the left for Lightning pair in the engine room. Then Prothelo, Magelli and of course Alan the captain. The halfback pairing of Robinson and Duffy. Levy Bond and McGilvray in the centres with Ishida on the right. Hesketh on the left and then Kerhor at fullback. As for South Africa, as we mentioned, many of these players in the single figures for caps. This is their opportunity on this tour, and they get a great welcome from the benches too. It is Charlie Gunter and Mazibukwana in the front row, Stridom and Makua in the second row. Ongolekana, Solonsi and Jacobs in the back row. Potkita and Rensburg at halfback. Kawe and Silias in the centres. Namba on the right, Malinga on the left and Schneiders at full back. Now the players are lined up. Before we get underway, it is time for the national anthems.
Mate. Go well. Two rousing versions, a cappella of the national anthems ahead of England under 20s versus South Africa, live from Hazelwood, the home of London Irish. You join us via the South African Rugby YouTube. And thank you for joining us, whether you're in South Africa or anywhere around the world. We are moments away from kickoff. And don't let the sunshine fool you because it is absolutely freezing here just outside London. But the conditions are good. The pitch looks great. And Zinke, exciting. Ready to go. Yes, we're ready to go. We're ready to go now. <laughs> On days like this then, do you wish you were out there playing or are you happy to be sat here with me? Um, Weather-wise, I really wish I'll be <laughs> getting warm in there, I guess. Not sitting out there getting cold, I guess. Uh, I wish I was in there, one of them as well, but I'll be rooting with them back at the stands, I guess. Well, South Africa will get us underway. Van Rensburg wearing number 10. Great, that's fine. And that is just about travel 10. And it is Charlie with the first carry. Now Van Rensburg. Send the big ball carriers through. South Africa with the first possession spills out the side and Pochita manages to pick up the pieces. Here's Siliers. Now Schneiders. Ball goes to ground and England get their first touch. Leave it now. Go back. Advantage over weight. Big boot on that. There is a breeze out there. Slightly favouring England at the moment. But it is swirling round the kick goes back it's managed to turn the full back but where's it going to roll will it keep going over the dead ball line yes it will so a minute gone not the first mistake from the kick a little bit of timing there with the kick um, from Snyder's I guess and with the fact that she's going with the, with the wind maybe um, the wind took the ball all over to the um, double line. Well, it looked the right decision, didn't it? There was definitely was space a in behind. Decision, yeah, perfect decision. Just the wind took it all over. And our first look at the set piece. Flo Robinson put the ball in for England. Oh, and a good scrum from South Africa as well, England. Going backwards and Robinson really having to work to get that ball out. Solid pressure there from number 11, number. Um, managed um, for the English team to actually make a mistake and make it, throw it out the, the field, I guess. Well, from one set piece to the other, our first look at the line out, but a good early scrum from South Africa. Okay, otherwise I'll slow you down. Step out, it's four man. Here's Mickey Hunter. Short numbers for South Africa, but England pinch it. And South Africa win the penalty. Oh. Tapping off. Solonzi is going on. Solonzi wants to inject some pace, which they do now. Van Rensburg goes to the left again, pass. Just behind the open side flanker, Jacobs. But a good platform here for South Africa. So Van Rensburg. And then on the wraparound, it's Carway. Good early possession here for South Africa. Charlie. Carries them up to just outside the 22. And dummy and tuck from Carway who gets over the gain line again. South Africa winning the physical battle early on. Charlie again. Another strong carry from the loose head prop. Now Van Rensburg. Straight on. Has that ball gone to ground? Yes, it has. So it'll be England put in at the scrum. But good field position for South Africa. And a very positive early start. Some positive carries. See, South Africa is actually working very well in their position early in the game. Um, it's just a matter of just keeping the ball and minimising that little mistakes, I guess. So second scrum of the match, the first. England went backwards but managed to get the ball out. Flo Robinson doing very well at the base. 
and that win really picking up now. So if England do clear with the boot, they'll do well to get metres on it now. South Africa looking to turn the screw. It starts to move, but number eight, Negrelli, does well before the mistake. And now South Africa with a fantastic attacking position. Scrum right in the middle of the pitch, inside the England 22, with just over four minutes on the clock. Just looking at how they're lining up, they've got Cilias and Number to the right. Van Rensburg just sat in the pocket behind the scrum. Schneider's behind her. And then Kawe and Malinga to the left. In it comes from Pokita. Started to shape to the right now, South Africa. Use it! Still with a shove on at the scrum. Right, the number eight goes. Oh, spilled forward and the chance goes. With that scrum going forward, Solonsi's eyes lit up there, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good scrum for the South African team again, once again. So I think they really looking at um, the set pieces to take the English team to the from the set pieces, which is going well so far. Well, there have been three set scrums in the last minute or so, <laughs> and they've got gradually closer and closer to the England line. So Robinson, in it comes, and on comes that pressure from South Africa again. England holds strong, and Negrelli picks and goes. Oh, monster shot, and the ball's been turned over and then gets knocked on. Oh, that is a big shot. Plenty of physicality. We talked about the South Africans wanting to impose themselves and put their hand up for the jersey. And it's little plays like that that do exactly what we were talking about. Thinking the coach is now going to be all confused to pick the, the, the team for the next test that's coming up. And like you said, uh, South African is really showing their physicality. Um, yeah, I think uh, that is how they're going to go about with the game. And that test, of course, is at Twickenham on the 27th of November against the Barbarians. Yes, that will be a very special one as well. Each and every player will really want to play that one. I mean, it comes once in a very long time, so yeah. Yeah, special, special occasion. Unfortunately, those of you watching back home, it's very difficult to get on a plane and come and watch the match, but it will be able, uh, you, it will be available for you to watch but is that something that you've really been building towards because I, I know players always say you know one game at a time one training session at a time but when you've got something like that in the distance that must be on your mind all the time you are definitely um, yeah the, the, th the fact that it's actually happening now already is like a huge thing and sometimes you've just been planning and planning to actually for this moment I guess so I guess for the fact that it's actually now happening, is it's a huge honour and an opportunity, I guess, for each and every one of us. And as a group, because obviously you've hardly played any rugby for obvious reasons, how pleased are you to just be back together, back playing, back training? Huge honour. Like I said, there's a lot of people that we left back at home that would love to be part of this um, group. And obviously we're not out here just representing ourselves, but we know we're just carrying the whole country, carrying all the other girls that we left behind that would love to be here. So yeah, it's a great opportunity and it feels great to actually share for the day that it is again. Speaking of great opportunities, South Africa with the scrum moving towards the England line. This is the best opportunity of the match so far. Advantage. And now it comes out. Van Rensburg assesses the options, decides to go herself and scores. <laughs> South Africa dominant in the opening six or so minutes. Van Rensburg seeing half a gap, taking England defenders over the line with it. And it's South Africa five, England nil. That was a good drive, I don't take in there for is of Pilan Solonti. Um, like I said, uh, attacking from the set pieces again would work very well for the South African team. And yes, it did. It got us five points on the, on the board. Good finish there. Lizzie Duffy chasing back, but unable to make the tackle. And the pressure tells. That dominant scrum creating the platform for South Africa and now the opportunity to turn five into seven. 
gone on the angle from England stepping left slightly. Uh, and then she the six has just decided to Yes, Vasilius now, the youngest player. As well with a huge boot. Um, we're really I'm looking up to her as well. <laughs> Especially with the poles, um, kicking for poles and stuff. Just give her time as well. Thirteen points in a South Africa jersey is now fifteen points in a South Africa jersey. She gets her first conversion of the match and adds the extras. England nil, South Africa seven. Well, important now for England to respond because they have been starved of territory. South Africa dominant, and being helped by the wind as well. So Kawe takes that on the full, then bumps off one would-be defender. It was Kendall Wardby, was put flat on her back. Now Charlie with another carry, targeting the winger Jenny Hesketh. And Rensburg to the captain. And South Africa, well, nearly up to halfway. And then conceding the penalty. Green seven, and then you've just pulled her over. No, tackle bags. Thank you, mate. So England find touch. I thought we were going to have that in the commentary position. I thought you were going to have to catch that. <laughs> Not a very um, nice one, especially for the kickers, especially when you're playing against the wind. Um, at least she, she managed to actually find touch, and that's a good thing for the team. So here's Kendall Wardby there, the left for Lightning hooker. One of four left for Lightning players in the pack for England today. You've got Wardby, Ives Campion, Antwis, and Prothero. Not straight. Now, South Africa with the option of the line-out or the scrum. <laughs> Judging by the way the set scrum has <laughs> gone so far, that's not a conversation that lasted <laughs> long. Even before the ref asked, they just went to, to where the scrum is supposed to be. Ten minutes gone on our game clock. Your first reminder that we're not linked in with the referee's watch, so it will be close, but if the clock goes red and your team are leading, then don't get too excited. There might still be some time remaining, but ten minutes has gone on our clock and then it comes from Pochita. Use it now. And keeping it in, now being told to use it, which they do. Carway trying to put some gas on it and Namba gives them that gas. Great feet, great pace and then Malinga on the left hand side, Malinga striding clear. Oh and just put into touch a metre short, it was a great cover tackle from Jenny Hesketh. But South Africa cutting loose. So much confidence is actually in actually putting it wide as well. Getting so much meters for the team. What a lovely pass that was from winger to winger as well. Namba finding Malinga. Who got away from Heskett the first time and she did well just to scrag the ankle and stop her short. But now England find themselves in the 22. And this is a big test of character for this young England side who just about managed to get that line out of the way. It was a second bite of the cherry from Lily Ives Campion. Oh, big shot coming in on Ella Lovie Bond. A good clearance kick and now Malinga with a second touch in quick succession. Good step off the left foot to bump off another defender and set the platform for South Africa. Rensburg shoves it on one more, sends a heavy carrier through. Quick ball again for the outside half. Oh, and the ball's so close Advantage. to getting round the outside, but it's a fumble from Silias. England in possession once more. Duffy. There's Yona Antwis. Duffy again in the navy blue scrum cap, shoves it on one more, England looking to put some width on it this time and lovely feet there from Ishida, oh great gas from Ishida, 
gets bundled into touch in the end but that the first clean pair of heels we've seen from the DMP winger and finally some light at the end of the tunnel for England and the wingers enjoying themselves out there to be fair it's a great surface isn't it I must say it's very nice for the wings getting in a lot of runs as well the lovely runs I must say so Hunter finds the jumper Van Rensburg here's Solonzi oh good hands again so Schneider's looking to put Namba into space Namba trying to go around the outside manages to stay in field though does well Avi Kershaw stems the South African attack for one phase Van Rensburg pass in behind oh it's been picked off and Lily Ives campion steals the ball back for England it's a Duffy adding some weight there it's slow ball for England but finally some ball inside the South African half the chance to go through some phases England nil South Africa 7 Duffy England with the ball out of the back Jenny Hesketh working hard against Namba who pushes her back over the halfway line England losing metres oh lovely offload and a good tackle there by Jacobs the captain been lost forward and Mazi Bukwana steadies the ship for South Africa who are going to kick in behind now looking to use that win to their advantage Hesketh watches it over her shoulder and gets a kind bounce and then straight out good chase by Namba very nice play for the South African team there No, Jenny Hesketh got a kind bounce on that kick, but Namba breathing down her neck, so kicked it straight out on the full, and more good field position here for the visitors. Out. Thank you. That wind really roaring through. Just behind the line out throw, you can see the assistant referee's flag blowing in the wind. England have pinched the line out, it's a slight overthrow. Duffy picks that one up, the ball wobbling in the air and Namba takes no chances and lets it go out for a line out. That was one of those ones that's wobbling here, there and everywhere and she did well there not to take a risk. Not to even touch the ball I think, she really did well. One drop out then. Better line out ball this time, quick off the top. Van Rensburg. Kawa, good shot on her and England up quickly in defence. Siliers treads up over halfway though, gets past Magilville Ray and here is Kawe. Oh, steamrolls Kershaw. How about that from Kawe? Another unbelievable carry. England thought they had hands on the ball but instead it's Van Rensburg back inside the 22. Schneiders round the outside. Gets the second try. And once again, South Africa overpower England. It is a blend of power and pace, and it is a second try. Great run there from Kumisa Kawe. Um, sometimes when you see a player running straight into you like that, you <laughs> as a defender, you pray that they step, and instead they just bump over you, unfortunately. But that was a good run from her, and great finish from Snyder's. Yeah, Ishida showed her the outside, but the touchline was too far away. Oh, but there was never going to be a sidestep there, was there? I mean, as a defender, I would expect, oh, please pray and like, please step me to run off of me, kind of thing. But no, not, uh, that's very rare in a South African team, and she's also a, a big carrier of the team, and she's been doing well, and that's a. Uh, that's what she's good at and yeah, she, she must just keep on doing it, yeah. So Yaki Silias with the win from the touchline. This a tough kick, she is one from one so far. Certainly got the legs. And the flags go up, great kick 
South Africa 14, England 0. And you did say to me that she is great off the tee and she is a massive asset to this team. She is definitely a great wood and very young as well, so you can just imagine the asset that we have in the team. Another look at that finish then. It was well finished from Snyders, but the damage was done before that. England always retreating in defence. South Africa making their physical advantage and of course the wind advantage pay they've kicked straight back to Carway, who gets up over the gain line again now Van Rensburg oh lovely offload again and it is Cilias Again, targeting the defender, Abby Kershaw, having to make some big up-front tackles from full-back. Direct running from strong, powerful backs. South Africa back in the England half. Now Van Rensburg, looking at a second row this time. Hands on it for England. Kendall Wardby thought she'd pinched that, but no such luck. Oh, but England have pinched it this time. And Lizzie Duffy comes up with it from the tackle. Little dummy and snipe as well. Nice work from Flo Robinson. Is she isolated? No, but in comes the counter. And this time, South Africa do pinch it. Mickey Hunter coming away with it. But the hard work was done before she got there. Approaching 20 minutes. Oh, Flo Robinson has pinched another ball. Oh, and then... Namba sees the open rib cage of Maisie Allen and takes full advantage. But Allen back on her feet and England back in possession. Another rip. This time, the South Africa captain nearly pinching the ball, but England still in possession on the halfway line. First time they've really been able to put some phases together, England. Hands are going beyond and you're sweeping back. Height it break down. Oh, England missed touch with the penalty. A look at the interest that's been sent back with. Cannon of a boot, but now England perhaps with the opportunity to counter. And shoveled on to the left hand side. Oh, lovely bit of footwork, though. No! Beat by the rock. That's a bit of prolonged possession that England have had, but they're finding gain line really hard to come by here. To win that fight's got to get out. Move away quicker. And England do manage to find touch this time. They don't take any gambles. And it's pretty much gone directly across the pitch. Tacklers must speed up getting away, and then your players can't go on the floor and then sweep back the ball. They must attack the ball. Kendall Wardby readjusts. Time off, they want a water break for both sides. And with that, there will be a water break. I'm not sure I'd want water. I'd want like a cup of tea or a coffee or a hot chocolate or something. But a, a chance for England to regroup and a chance for South Africa to pat themselves on the back and talk about a great 20 minutes of rugby because your team have been very impressive. Yeah, it's been going well. Um, it's just a matter of, of keeping the ball once again. And um, if you're in the ground, just not throw the ball around and um, wait for your players to actually come and, 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 and form a rock instead and, and we go from there. And yeah, otherwise, that African team is, do, is doing very well. And the English team is also gaining some possession, I guess, getting a few phases, like you said, uh, which is um, getting exciting, I guess, uh, exciting um, game of rugby. And hopefully it's just going to pile up onto that. What's impressed you about the way that this young South Africa side has played in the opening 20 minutes? 
heart everyone is showing heart i guess um everyone is just physical i know that's our strong point and um sometimes it's very hard to show in a, against other teams and i guess now that they're getting a chance it's it's they're doing very well so the heart that they've shown is what has stood out for me uh, let's have a talk about club rugby in england then because a lot of these young english players are involved with the premier 15s um it is a great league it is indeed um like five of them i'll say my team except the chiefs uh, big up the chiefs, <laughs> yeah. chiefs, chiefs. <laughs> uh, but yeah i must say that is also quite a higher standard that I, I i saw when i came over and um compared to what we actually doing back in south africa it's it's nothing i must say but um my, uh, my on the other side as well south africa as as a whole we, we also trying to to meet up that standard and um, obviously there's a lot that needs to be done and um, hopefully we get there one day. Because you were the first South African to come and play in the Premier 15, is that yeah, correct? that's correct. Yeah. And yeah. what kind of welcome did you get at the Chiefs? It was very nice, everyone was so welcoming and kind and willing to help with everything but just the weather that wasn't so nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Exeter is a beautiful part of the world, I'll not have anything bad said against it. Um, but the, the the women's program and the league and the competition is growing in South Africa, isn't it? You've got twice as many games now and it's moving in the right direction. Yes, yes. This year as well we played about 10 games provincially, which has never happened before. And also having to be live streamed as well, so everything is going in the right direction. Hopefully it just gets better and better each and every day. It's going in the right direction and it is a very positive scoreline for South Africa so far. England are allowed to play with that. Looked like it might not have gone straight, but China kill of the Bristol Bears. Manages to pick it up at the back, and England with some quicker ball here and getting some gain line as well. But South Africa set that green wall on the 10. And are really making England work for their meters, which they're getting. Central Ishida on the right hand side, hot stepping. Penalties mounting up here for South Africa. That's three in a few minutes, either side of the water break. And Lizzie Duffy, end over end, into touch. Just outside the 22, and this has been a real rarity for England. You're really good at attacking the ball tacklers must clearly get away we just spoke about it you don't want to lose a player for it and the referee just having a word there saying exactly what he wants he has been communicating well so Wardby finds Lily Ives campion and England to set the drive here and it starts to move too good forward unit here for England and now Flo Robinson has an advantage to play with, so a free go at it. Lizzie Duffy. Now Lovie Bond. Bouncing ball to Hesker. It's driven back by Namba and gets the offload away. Simon Kelly Namba. Working hard in defence and this time it's England to come away with the ball but still not coming over the gain line. She's good over the ball, we'll go back. Oh, would have been a turnover there from Charlie. But instead, the penalty advantage from the infringement at the drive. And Flo Robinson Can't lift the leg in the ball. thinks about going quickly. Instead, Lizzie Duffy is going to go for the corner. And England are going to try the same again. 20 metres closer. Definitely, we want to try a, a line out after having a very positive one before the, the play. You've just gone penalty, penalty, and then another one for lifting the leg in the ball. It stops. Well, that sounded like a final warning to me. And South Africa will not want a player going to the sin bin. Oh, very nearly pinched by South Africa, but. Maisie Allen does well and England start to come again there are bodies strewn and it's gone down legally so England are going to have to do it the hard way they pick and they go and they're close first real defensive challenge for South Africa 
first real time that England get to fire a shot. There's Antwis. There's Robinson, has a look. And going to go wide with this. All the way out of the back. Can it go one more? Here's Jenny Hesketh. Cuts inside and again stood up by Namba, who's defended so well and got hands on the ball to his number. Up the blind side, a dummy when it could have gone to Allen. So Robinson out to the next attack. It's Kelsey Clifford. England as close as they have been. Calling in the reinforcements. They want to add weight to this. As to South Africa, what a tackle that is. And some hands on it too, and South Africa win the penalty. They withstand the England attack. Three is a great position over the ball. Solid defences from the South African team. Definitely don't want them in the half, I see. <laughs> and now a chance for Cilias to clear the lines with the wind. And a good clearance, 30 metres or so upfield. And they'll have the benefit of the throwing at the line out too so the first defensive questions answered definitely definitely let me move forward from here Hunter to the front again England trying to put a hand on it but it's good ball and South Africa wanting to run it from their own 22 and Van Rensburg cuts a beautiful angle there's Kershaw Oh, gets handed off. Look at that from Van Rensburg, who's going to go over for a second try. What a finish from the young number 10. Started in her own half on the wraparound. It ended over the line, and in between there was pace and power once again. That's one for the highlights reel. Definitely, that was a good run there from Libby. Yeah, we look at it here on the wraparound and she just saw the mismatch in midfield didn't she she got on the outside of Lizzie Duffy there were four of either side now there's going to be a handoff here oh. Jenny Hesketh just getting her feet in the wrong position Abby Kershaw gave chase but by then it was too little too late and Van Rensburg gets her second I like the way that she also looks for her support then she's just like um, no one is coming I'll just go on my own was a good run from Libby. I think she was a bit quick for the support. I think a few gave chase, but she got the wind in her sails. There was only going to be one outcome. Jackie Sillias. Ah, that's the wind, isn't it? They might have to go old school where someone puts their finger on the top of the ball. <laughs> Please, someone must lay the, the, the right direction. Uh. The first unsuccessful kick. Misses to the left. But as we approach half an hour here, 19 0. Let's have another look at it here. That was the break. Inside her own 22, let alone inside her own half. And then just the step inside, and she'd done really well to turn Jenny Hesketh. His feet were in the wrong position, but it was a solid fend. And a great finish. Players are putting their hands up, you know. Definitely, I think my mate here is a little bit worried. <laughs> so, Charlie. Wait. Use. Bodkita. Van Rensburg, who's on a hat trick all of a sudden. Gunter on the short ball. Advantage. And a penalty advantage as well. Four. Lily Ives champion guilty at the breakdown great players all from Levy I'm playing from advantage and trying to get out of our okay, Neil, half obviously oh, tell them, mate. that's a great kick does make such a difference knowing that you've got a reliable boot to get you out of trouble doesn't it definitely against especially with the wind so might as well use that um, advantage they're making a sub just step out 
Thank you. How many? Seven. Right, step in. Well, England making a replacement. It's April Ishida coming off. I will confirm who's come on. Still no replacements for South Africa. Oh, look at this drive from South Africa. The catch. Clean. It's accurate. And now it goes to ground. Use it. And Van Rensburg waits. Cilias throws the offload unnecessarily perhaps but it's come back into green hands Namba in there playing scrum half again it's scrappy and again somehow it comes back South Africa's way Snyder's back South Africa back on the halfway line after the forward to set that great platform Matty Bukwana Schneiders Malinga Really catching that ball off, but a lovely little chip from Carway, tempting and Hesketh just about gets it. That's the one that dropped in no man's land. She did have to work hard. Flo Robinson. Leave it, no, leave it. Advantage. Advantage for England. None coming. South Africa not rolling away. Fair bit of time remaining. Yeah, keep playing. In this first half. Okay, Lizzie Duffy finds touch, but England still Edge in the their own half. And I don't think we're going to know exactly how valuable this wind is until about 10 minutes into the second half and uh, whether or not England will be able to build some territory but they've struggled for it so far <laughs> I'm definitely sure second half that's what they're going to be doing kicking the whole time and that's how they had, uh, most of the English teams do especially in the premiership as well oh, South Africa throwing two up at the line out it misses everyone and ends up in the hands of Nikita Prothero one of the most diminutive figures in the team ends up with it right in the bread basket Duffy. Kershaw cuts a nice line and then gets stood up by Malinga. The left winger defending infield and South Africa trying to hold England up off the ground here. Does go to ground though. Here's Duffy. Where's this going to bounce? It's going to bounce for Schneiders. And Hesketh gets the tackle in and and the ball ends up in touch on the far side. Just gone a little bit scrappy since that second Van Rensburg try. <laughs> Can you just step out for me, please? Thank you. Five. They said five. <laughs> Backwards off white. South Africa coming again in search of the fourth try. Jacobs. Oh, and England do well over the ball. Attack the ball and lift it. And Jacobs holds on. Miss of touch there from Lizzie Duffy. That ball just ballooned in the wind. Lizzie Bukwana hitting the line hard. Heavy carries from the front row. Now Jacobs lines up for the carry. Gets brought down by Duffy. That's a good tackle by the outside half. Speaking of outside half, there's Van Rensburg. Cilias back to Van Rensburg. Lofted pass out to Namba. Such a low centre of gravity, gets round the outside, but then the touchline 
is England's friend. She's got that low centre of gravity, she looks super explosive. Super explosive and very short as well, I think that's why she just... Um, <laughs> you said that, I said low centre of gravity, okay? It works for her, I guess. <laughs> Familiar story for England with the ball, but inside their own half. And good read by South Africa. Same ball, use the line. Let's keep it simple. Thank you. I couldn't get away with it. They challenge again. It's fine play. Advantage. Okay, and all that, the seven's knocked on in the air. It's okay, a the knock on, then a knock on, then a knock on. The rhythm's just gone, hasn't it? Yeah, it was scrappy, like you said, as well. Have another look at the scrum here. This is where South Africa... I say where they've been dominant. They've been dominant in most facets of the game. In the opening 36 minutes here. You're just tuning in. You've missed three tries. Two from Van Rensburg. The one from the fullback Snyders, the second Van Rensburg one. A fine finish from all of 75 metres. We'll show you the replays again at half time. Oh, but now it's England's turn to carry some ball. Now, is there some space on the right hand side? There's Nava over there making the tackle from one wing to the other. Now that's Maisie Allen for England. The captain wearing number seven. Places the ball. England with it on the halfway line. Oh, short ball. Then a big shot there on Antwis. Carried into traffic. Oh, that's a nice offload. Taking away a couple of defenders. Ward be out there on the wing. No, Duffy. Oh, now some ball for England to run onto, and is there some space on the outside? It is a nice ball, but the cover tackle comes in from Van Rensburg. But England up into the 22. Another carry from Antwis. She hasn't let that big shot put her off. But South Africa have stolen it. Antwis turned over in the tackle and Van Rensburg. What happens? <laughs> Holding on, eight's in a good position over the ball. Thank you. Don't like to say that, look a panic then. Giving me a no! <laughs> giving you the penalty. Good turnover then from Salonsi. That's the exact picture I want to see. Oh, thank you. There you go. So good, it even got complimented by the referee. Couple of minutes to go, to go. until half time. It'll be South Africa. What will probably be the last attacking opportunity from just inside their own half. Five. Short numbers in the line outs. So there are a few forwards waiting to carry. And there is one of them. Come this way now. Holikana. Oh, good pick up from the second row. Now Cilias has to step inside but nearly gets away but she's left the ball behind. So instead it'll be England with some field position just ahead of half time. Can they get something on the board? No, they've lost the ball again. South Africa deadly in the contact zone. Especially in their own red zone. No advantage. Again, a strong position, lifting. Particularly in the last few minutes, Everyone really gets. impressive turnover ball from South Africa. Especially from the number eight, that is a strong point as well. This is a good fetch and she's doing play. a job at the moment. Just looking at the starting 15, we talked about how inexperienced they are. She is the most experienced with eight caps. It's unbelievable. But they certainly haven't been playing like a team 
who don't have a lot of caps and that's Charlie who's ripped the ball in contact and made another five meters and the pendulum swings South Africa's way once more oh lovely pickup And now it's England who ripped the ball. And it's gone backwards once again. It's like a bar of soap. No one wants to keep hold of it. But now England under pressure inside their own 22. South Africa looking to counter. Slow ball. But it is England ball. Oh, it was England ball. That's been knocked on by Lily Ives, champion. Two knock-ons. First white, second green. And much to England's relief after the first knock-on, the referee calls for the end of the first half, a half that has been dominated by South Africa. This young, inexperienced team certainly playing in a way that if I told you there were fewer than 50 caps in this starting 15, you probably wouldn't believe me. Three tries, two conversions, some great field position and plenty to celebrate from this side what has impressed you definitely very much impressed with the first half and hopefully the coaches will now get into their heads again um, just to finish off how they started because as there's a lot of um, little mistakes knock-ons and kind of things hopefully that will gather that will be gathered now and into the second half half time here at Hazelwood England under 20s nil Springbok women 19 Well, let's have a look at the first, well, the only three tries. Let's have a look at the first one, though, because it was a great start. South Africa were dominant in the scrum. We thought they might be, but it created the platform, and that was a lovely finish from Van Rensburg. Very nice one to actually start um, the game and uh, carrying the ball forward through three people. Impressive. <laughs> Well, that was an impressive try, but there's a much more impressive one coming up. The third try definitely one for the highlights reel. In fact, this is her second try. We see it on the wraparound there. Oh no, sorry, this was the uh, this was the break from the wingers, wasn't it? Where we saw Namba, who had a fantastically energetic first half, coming off her wing and then putting Malinga in. It was a great chase back, but great focus. She looked very relaxed, and Jenny Hesketh did well to deny the try. Definitely, um, defender went very well there. And number, it's so rare that you see um, two wings at the same side. And I'm guessing number is a work rate kind of wing, which um, helped uh, the South African team as well. Well, this was the second try. Schneider's round the outside. A really good finish, but that was all set up from that huge carry in midfield. <laughs> Another look at this. It's a lovely ball out wide. And Van Rensburg putting Snyders away. She's had a great half, the outside half, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Van Rensburg is doing well, very well, enjoying herself, I see. And um, she's really putting the team into the front foot. And yeah, they, <laughs> they're giving her points to the team. And yeah. Well, this was the try that I think she'll be talking about for a long time. She was inside her own 22 at the beginning and still had a lot of work to do. I mean, it was lovely work here. That's where she's received the ball. Here's that wrap around where they spot the mismatch and it's all well and good breaking the line, but there's so much work to do between breaking the line and finishing the try. That's that's correct as well. I think the, the fact that she's also used to be a sevens player is a, is a huge thing. You can't really give them a little bit of space so that you get a class like she did now. Yeah, it was a brave chase back by Abby Kershaw, but couldn't get anywhere near. It uh, just forced her wide enough to mean that uh, Cilias did not convert the try, which is why the score is as it is. It is England under-20s, nil Springbok women, 19. Uh, Zinka, I'm going to let you get warm for the second half. I think you're being subbed out, but thank you for joining us. Uh, your final thoughts on the half of rugby you've seen and what you're looking forward to for the rest of the tour. Um, thank you so much for having me, first things first, Dave. Um, 
quite impressed with, our, with the rugby that they, the team has showed and hopefully we take this momentum into our next game and with all positive vibes as well um, picking up all the positives into into the next game so we're excited for for the opportunity to actually play against the Bavarians which is quite rare and um, I think it's a it's a career highlight for each and every one of us so yeah hopefully um, we first finish today and take all the positive into the Bavarians game well it has been great to have your company enjoy the second half and that goes for you guys at home we'll be back with the second half very shortly it's England under 20s nil Springbok win 19. Yeah. 
Well, Lynn, first of all, let's talk about that half of rugby we've seen because you put a team out there today. The most experienced player has eight caps, but they've really played as a unit and played some wonderful rugby. Yeah, look, I think it's a really, it's been a really good first half, and we're really happy with it. Um, we brought 33 players over on this tour, and a couple of them haven't had game time yet. Um, so it's really important to get starts, to know what that's like to get your start. And in particular, I think in this game we've probably attacked an awful lot more than we have in the other games. So the games obviously have been really tough tests um, and all of those things are really kind of key components in in getting an understanding of what we're trying to do in, in this build um, as we move forward. So yeah, really, really good first half and I think everyone's going to be pleased. I, I had this discussion on commentary because ultimately rugby is a results game and when you look through the history books you see one team has scored X number of points and the other team has scored uh, more or less and it means that you have a winner and a loser. But with where the women's game is at the moment, there is always progress and there are always markers that you'll be laying down for individuals and the team and the forwards and the backs. Um, how many of those have you hit in this tour? Are you pleased with how the rugby's gone? Yeah, look, I think that's a really important point. I think, you know, we're used to watching sport and just watching watching teams that are at the, the top of the top and then it's just about the scoreline. I suppose what we're, we're definitely on a developmental journey and as a result of it, we have to pick our milestones and, and work towards meeting them and, and you know, the score isn't as important even though it will be in the future. So, like within this tour itself, like our, our main objectives has been to, to get game time, to get competitive game time, to get a reference points against the Englands, the Frances who are going to play in the World Cup next year, to get everybody um, on the pitch and to try and get an understanding of, of where they're at uh, compared to those teams. Um, we're doing well, like I think in general we're kind of three games in now of four and I think in general the responses have been fine. Things like we don't, we're not picking up many injuries, these all just gives us, give us an understanding of where we're at from a conditioning point of view, a medical point of view. So all of those from my role is important. I know everybody just wants to focus on the rugby, um, but when we focus in on that we break that down into how we're doing attack, defence, how, how effective are we in set piece, in our counters, our rooks, um, etc. So um, yeah, like that's we have all of those kind of stats buried away and, and nuzzle through them as the weeks go on. Um, and in general, it's positive. But I think the biggest thing to come out of this is what are our learnings, because we'll sit down and reflect at the end of the tour and say what do we need to work on for the next nine months. At the end of the tour, you have a game against the Barbarians. What an incredible moment for the program, for the players, for everybody involved. Mm. Yeah, look, again, the Barbarians are, are a great side and they're putting out a great side. It's yet to be released, but we definitely know some really <laughs> high calibre players in there. So our back three are definitely going to have to um, be on their best game. Um, but again, for us, it's about playing in big stadiums. We're going to be playing in, in Twickenham. We're going to probably play against there'll probably be 15,000 or so that are still there and all of those things are important for the girls to get exposure to tricking up the pitch is very fast as well as a hard pitch all of those things from a conditioning point of view are, are, are things we want to give the girls exposure to um, and it'll be the fourth game of four and that replicates the World Cup too so you have to play your best game at the last and so you need to be fit enough to do that I, I want, I've got so much that I still want to talk to you about but the, the players are back out so I'd just like to ask you for a few things that everybody watching back home in South Africa what can they look Look out for? How can they follow the progress of this team, not just the Springboks team, but in terms of where the players are playing rugby, how they're getting better, and ultimately how you're going to move from 13 in the world rankings up into the top 10, then beyond, and ultimately be a world force? Yeah, look, from a visibility point of view, we've, we've, we're working really hard on making the game visible. So, SA Rugby website, that's where you're going to see that stuff. Um, and then otherwise, we're trying to work really hard with all of the provinces to try and get an understanding of where they're at and where we need to go to and try and build those steps. So we're working hard on, on, on building that community um, within all of the provinces and then within, the, within all of those provinces you will be able to hopefully access rugby, women's rugby more locally so you can get involved in what that journey looks like too. Well there is obviously plenty of talent. I've missed kickoff, so I'm going to sprint back to the commentary position now but thank you so much for having a chat and enjoy the second no, half. No. Cheers. <laughs> Ball has gone forward. Oh, Nikita Crother open. Which is me to grab my breath. Just a knock on, scrum wipe.
the gap on the tight head scope. As in here. If you want more space, you're the one that steps back. Well, teams like to take the opportunity to make changes at half time. Commentary teams do too. So, subbing in our finisher, BB. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Very excited but cold. Um, yeah. <laughs> Part of the love. Um, you were sat next to us in the first half and you looked and sounded like you were really enjoying yourself. <laughs> it's a spectacular, spectacular show that uh, both teams are putting up actually and I am loving, loving, loving it. Well, South Africa on the move already. Oh, a lovely kick inside is Van Rensburg going to get on the end of it. She's chasing a hat-trick after those two great tries, but Lovie Bond picks up. There have been some changes for England. So Tori Sellers wearing number 21 is on at scrum half. Georgina Tasker is on in the back three as well. Just casting my eyes out to see if there have been any replacements for South Africa. I can't see any yet. It appears uh, we've gone in the second half without any changes. Well, if it's not broken, we don't fix it, do we? So, um, a mammoth of, a, of, a, of innings okay, from, from the South African side. And of course, these players who haven't had the opportunity to put the jersey on, they're going to be dragged off the pitch kicking and screaming, aren't they? <laughs> well, it's, it's a matter of getting the opportunity and the opportunity will come eventually. Um, but I think today is the day that those who have the jersey on uh, put the best foot forward. Just about got away with that You're one. Fine. We were right in line with that. I'll be honest, I didn't think it was straight. But what it does mean is South Africa have got a great platform here. And look at that driving into the 22. Great form on the drive as well. Moves up the blind side and goes again. And into touch. Even getting away with it. More changes as well. Georgie Grimes wears number 17. She's a Gloucester Hartbury front rower. Lovely rolling more from the Sylvester. Five. Well, the forward pack, given that it's effectively a scratch forward pack, we haven't played together very often, it looked very fluid. Knock on advantage. And so after a pitch Just rather than line out as well, and it's gone Thank forward you. off an England hand. So Solonsi. advantage over. Oh, good shot on her as well. The advantage over, so Van Rensburg has got something to do. Great feat. The first season playing 15s rugby, right? Yes, uh, Libby is renowned for the sevens outfit, but Mrs. Stanley Rubenheimer decided to bring her into the 15s setup because he knew that she possesses something special, and that something special is definitely on display here today. It certainly is. England with their hands on the ball inside their own 22. Use it! Box kick clear. Over Schneider. She chases back but has some time for the counter. Oh, lovely step. Oh, wonderful feat from Schneider's. Already Move one in. try. She's got around Tory Sellers. Oh, an open field like that. That's a defender's nightmare, isn't it? Absolutely, I would not want to be one on one with Donnell Snyder. She has very happy feet. <laughs> <laughs> now it comes out to the left hand side. Here's Malinga. Good offload from Malinga. But Cilia's on the support line. The blind side this time. It's Van Rensburg trying to take the short ball, and Abby Kershaw makes a good tackle, and Abby Kershaw. Pinched that ball for England, oh, but then that held on to it. She'd done all the hard work. Yes. Oh, South Africa have gone quickly here. Mazi Bukwana. Oh, and now Malinga. And another steal. I've never known so many steals in a game of rugby. <laughs> Jemima Moss, another second half replacement for England, who really have rung the changes. Prothero, oh, the back row, putting boot to ball, it's gone straight out, but it was inside the 22. So it would allow both teams to reset the South Africa ball. 
It's quite important that both these teams try to settle and get into their rhythm once again in the second half. We've been seeing lots of steals, so it's, it's a crime scene, but uh, <laughs> we're happy that the flow of the game is coming on nicely and uh, you know the teams are having a blast. Oh, South Africa doing ever so well to keep the ball in play there. Makua, we're in number five, and now in Kolekana. And that's been lost forward. So our first scrum of the second half, the South Africa pack unchanged, but there are some fresh faces on for England, mainly in the front row. Kendall Wardby still there. She's got two new props alongside her. The South African team has been quite dominant in the set pieces, especially the scrums, especially in the first half as well. And I think that's the one momentum they're going to want to keep going um, throughout throughout this uh, this half. Now the squeeze starts to come on from South Africa. It's wheeled. You're going round on the mark. In England put in again, so just a reset scrum. So talk to me about how the tour has been. We've talked a lot about um, about the rugby. Yeah, but have you been in bubbles? Have you been able to see anything? It's actually been a fantastic tour. Of course, we'd love to have had it under different circumstances. Um, we have been in some kind of a bubble which requires high high levels of, of precaution in terms of where we go and who we interact with but over and above that it's been a fantastic fantastic season for us massive growth but looking forward to the next one oh yeah exactly oh that's a big shot from number i think it's going to be a penalty Namba, the right winger, has been incredibly busy. She's taken a player off the ball and conceded a penalty there. And you've been to Cardiff as well. I love Cardiff. Yep, absolutely fantastic city. Love the people. What a vibe. And what a better place to play than in Cardiff Arms against the Welsh. Of course. Of course. I was there the previous week for, uh, for the Japan game. It's a fabulous game. Another great team, Japan. Over on tour at the moment. They're looking to move the ball through the hands. That's Georgie Grimes. Strong ball carrier. And the tutelage of Sean Lynn at Gloucester Heartbreak. Here's Lizzie Duffy. And then Thorpe. Stays in field, Holly Thorpe. And England up over the halfway line. So that could be called onside by the referee. That's Allen at first receiver. Lizzie Duffy waits. The English seem to be attacking quite hard and putting South Africa under uh, some kind of defensive pressure. Yeah, a bit, of, uh, bit more energy to England, but then there's a loose pass. And Malinga does well to bring Thorpe into touch. So where have you spent time in Toto? Here in London, of course. You've been to Cardiff. Where else have you stayed? We've been to France as well. In fact, uh, France was the first country that we arrived oh. at from South Africa. From there then, went to Wales, Cardiff, and now we're here in the cold but beautiful London. Oui, oui, mon ami. <laughs> hey, time spent in France is always good time, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and then you are here for another week. Of course, the Barbarians fixture, which we continue to talk about, but... If you can't talk about playing the Barbarians, what can you talk about? <laughs> it's a fantastic, fantastic opportunity to play against some of the best in the world. And uh, the Barbarians are nothing short of that, which is why we are extremely excited to step on Tukinam and go at it. Yeah, it's going to be a very, very special occasion. And what's great about the way the women's game is going at the moment is that there are special occasions that are worth celebrating worth tuning in for and of course yes. worth being a part of absolutely and i think one of those moments is the barbarians game and how south africa has developed and grown over the past five years and um, we've been on a break for about four years 
before our last World Cup, which was in 2014. We missed out on the 2017 World Cup, and 2018 was the year that we announced um, our our comeback to international rugby. And here we are now playing in London against the Red Roses under 20. How excited are you with what's going on domestically? Because you spoke in the first half about the fact that you're, you're playing more games, there are more high quality teams, high quality players. You're all building towards a great domestic competition and an international team that essentially one day wants to be top of the tree and you seem to be moving in the right direction. So just, just give us an idea of, of how exciting it is to be a part of the domestic scene in South Africa and moving in that right direction. Yeah, we're moving very swiftly in that right direction and it's so exciting and beautiful to watch and experience and be part of that. Um, you know, the last season we've had 10 games, which was the first in a very, very long time. It's been televised on Super Sport which is a first as well. So it speaks to the growth of our game, not only on the field, but off as well. I think there's a massive, massive wave of growth happening and it's fantastic, fantastic to see. It certainly is. And as we can see from this team, not a lot of experience in it, but certainly plenty of quality. No scores so far in the second half. 12 minutes on our clock gone. It's still England nil, South Africa 19. A lot of the ball in the middle of the park as we've seen there. Knock on. A little knock, knock on, though. Feet before playing the ball as well. You can't just do that from your knees. No. Honestly, you, you've been brought a coffee. You need to drink some of it, otherwise it'll freeze and you'll be having it in bites. <laughs> it's so cold. And my biggest challenge is that my fingers are frozen to pick it up, but uh, <laughs> I'll give it a go. <laughs> so a short break in play here. A little bit of medical attention. Reset with a knock on. It was a knock on Captain. by the South African hooker, so it'll be an England put in. Two things. Yeah. So just break down, okay? You must get that tackle out of the way if you want to compete. Oh, somebody, look at this woman that stood next to her. She's just in a body warmer. She has no coat on. Maniac. Well, I guess she has a very strong immune system. <laughs> Either that or she must read the weather today. <laughs> So most of the people joining us will be watching on the South African Rugby YouTube channel. What sort of temperature is it like back home now? Oh, it's lovely compared to here, I have to be honest. We're averaging on around 32 to 35 degrees. We are in the middle of summer in South Africa, so if only I could just bring the sun over to this side. Okay? We get like you going off, we staying on. Three or four days okay. sunshine a year. <laughs> Change been made for South Africa, the first of the match, number 22, Royash coming on for her third performance. Uh, six green, two six. In a South Africa six jersey. And Bortez coming on wearing number 20 as well. That is Van Rensburg coming off, limping off as well. Hopefully that's not too serious because I think anybody who's watching this will be very excited to see her put the Springbok jersey on again. She's had a great game. Absolutely, she's been lightning in this game and she's brought life to it. And it's just a pleasure to see and to watch her do her thing in her element. But I think um, Rosaline Bortis will bring a different dynamic to the game. She's a forward, um, a hooker actually by nature, but she's so versatile that she's able to play just about at any position. And she's a pleasure to watch as well. Sounds like she's too talented for me. Almost too talented, yes, I agree with you. So, play will get back underway. England with the put in at the set scrum. Tory Sellers, the young scrum half, receives the ball from number eight. Oh, and lined up by Namba, whose work rate has been phenomenal on the right wing. She did give away that one penalty, tackling the player off the ball. Advantage no, South Africa advantage for the knock on and it'll be straight back knock for that on, advantage as Malinga watches it go down the front. It's a knock on and you're in front playing the ball offside. Oh, but instead, uh, give away the penalty. penalty. Not going back for the initial advantage. <laughs> well, Over there. Whatever the ref says goes, he's in charge of this game. And I think that uh, it's a call that he sees fit. On the water boy, mate. Straight out of the media playbook. That answer was, BB. <laughs> South Africa here. Thank you.
either way, good opportunity for England, still scoreless. Couldn't have finished any put more perfect that. And of course this fixture works both ways, a great chance for the inexperienced South African players to get some time in the jersey and play some great rugby. Great chance for these England under 20s to experience physicality against quality test match touring players. Speaking of physicality, Kimi Sakao has been a beast on the field to go a mean combination of pace and power. She's explosive, she's direct. What a pleasure to see this. Yeah, that's a first half carry through the middle where she steamrolled at poor Abby Kershaw. Oh. That's the one that led to the second try, of course. South Africa on the ball again to carry from the hooker Hunter. Flat. Dummy inside has that gone forward? No, says the referee. Oh, there are those dancing feet again. The Schneiders. And well, then hitting the line but leaving the ball behind. Backwards, says the referee from Mazabukwana. Looping ball, that is Hunter in at first receiver, and now Snyder's whipping the ball off the left hand to Namba. Again, who cannonballs forward and offloads to Bortez into the 22. Good tackle by Kershaw. Into touch, but let's rewind it a few phases, and that little step just in front of us from Snyder's. Put a huge smile on your face, uh, Bibi. How you incredible. It's now, absolutely scintillating stuff. She's lightning. Like I said, her feet are ever so happy no, and she you put the first receiver well into there, space then. onto onto Rosalind Bortis, thundered her way past the first and the second defender actually to be tackled and now we are looking at getting ready for a line out. Well, we will be. I think they're gonna have a refreshment break. Now, look, you guys watching at home, you're probably fed up of hearing me moan about the cold, and that's fine, right? You're there in the wall, but I've just seen the assistant referee in front of us here, right? That's Neil Sweeney. He played over 100 games in the National League for Isha. Now he's a referee and an assistant referee, and he looks absolutely furious that he hasn't got long trousers on and his shorts. He's freezing cold too. So it's not just the commentators that moan, it's the former players as well. And he was a front rower, so he's made a tough I mean, stuff. Any danger? <laughs> so in the refreshment breaks now, what are the kind of conversations that are being had amongst the players? Uh, let's start with South Africa. What do you think that would be said in that huddle? Yeah, I think I think the first thing that uh, they'd like to speak about is just playing the playing the, the game on their terms. Now, just calming the calming the game down a little bit, getting getting in spaces, getting into play in the, into the right places actually, um, you know, and just not lose the ball anyhow. And I think we're quite solid around the breakdown. Great carries. Um, good defensive efforts. I have just built on that going into the next few minutes of the second half. Yeah, because it's great field position here for South Africa. England not yet able to take advantage of the wind that is blowing in their favour in this second half here at Hazelwood. Thank you. Yeah, they're lining. How many? Kendall Wardby. The Lafra Lightning hooker. Play on. Scrappy on the line out. This, this is one territory that the English don't want to play in. Well, would be. Does carry and it's been ripped again. A number across the field. Oh, gets a lovely pass away. Oh, if that had gone there. There were numbers. Now, Schneiders. Finds Royash. Oh, still going somehow. Eventually brought down five metres short. Best opportunity of the second half to score so far. Schneider's in at first receiver. Charlie. Another heavy carry from the loose head prop. Out they come here to Jacobs. Still five metres short. Still plenty of width to work with. Has that gone forward? No, says the referee. So it's still with South Africa, but five metres further back. Bukwana in at scrum half there. Makua. 
Solonsi lining up like she wants to carry this. And it is Solonsi in at first receiver now. Schneiders. Again, Cowett. Every carry is the gain line. That's been hacked. And Schneiders chases back over halfway. They've all just gone bombing past Nikita Prothero, who stood up getting some medical attention to an arm. South Africa player down in quite some discomfort inside the 22 as well so both medical teams busy but the play continues on halfway up over halfway now as Charlie makes 10 meters oh, Schneiders Jacobs so with the changes there and Van Rensburg going off is Schneiders playing at standoff now she appears to be doing just that and brilliantly as well. Salonsi in it. that position too as Silias loses the ball forward. My apologies. It's going forward multiple times. And are you calling for calm? Yes, we need to we need to control the game a little bit more. Yep, Get into our down. processes, follow our processes. And just flow with it. I think we a little bit too over the place, but which can be fixed. It's nothing to worry about. And we're getting ready for my personal favorite part of the game, a scrum. What do you love about them? <laughs> well, I am a tight head prop, so you don't ask any prop, they'll tell you <laughs> the battle up front. You know, it's just uh, it's exciting. Boy. South Africa put the pressure on again and break up that England scrum as they've done very well to get the ball out have England and Millie Whitehouse on we're in number 20 cleans up and England do very well to get out of their own 22 Allen oh, that's really good work from Prothero she was getting medical attention a minute ago shows good pace Nikita Prothero another of the young Loughborough Lightning contingent they're in a bit of a rebuild phase Lightning haven't been contenders for the last few years. Oh, look at that power from South Africa again. Now Malinga. Oh, how has she finished that? Tried Had time. three England defenders in front of her. Finds the smallest of gaps around the outside. And Ayanda Malinga gets South Africa's fourth. She knew exactly what she wanted to do and she executed it. One thing you should never do is to give Ayanda Malinga even half a gap because she will definitely, definitely make some, something magical of it. And so she did over the trial line. What a fantastic finish. It's taken over 20 minutes of the second half for us to get any points on the board. But what a brilliant way to get them. Malinga receives this ball out wide and then just loses the defender. Three of them. She gets around the outside of Holly Thorpe. Jenny Hesketh was there and the fullback covering. But none of them could get anywhere near Ayanda Malinga. So here's Jackie Sillias into the wind this time. Pack the wind wobbling the ball on the tee. As a result, it holds it up. She's now two from four. But it is four tries for South Africa. And a lovely finish there from Malinga. She threatened to do it in the first half, didn't she? With that lovely break when she got the ball from Namba. She was tackled into touch that time. But let's have another look at this finish here. Oh, brilliant stuff. Good carry and pass from Rosaline Portis and she took out two, three defenders all at once. Fantastic stuff, man. Just that little swat away to get on the outside. Change the outside half for England because Lizzie Duffy has just come off the number 10. In South Africa seem to have made a change as well. We see Yonela Ngolo in the front row, quite an experienced prop. She has about 10, 11 caps to her neck, so she's been around for quite some time. England go low with the restart this time. Ball's gone backwards, Makua. There is 
Dennis Schneiders in that new role. And a shrill blast on the whistle as Delaney Burns goes down. She takes a knee. Confirmation that the head was on the wrong side, so there will be an on field assessment as to whether or not Delaney Burns will be able to continue. So I like to use opportunities like this as education. So when the mic's off, I'll teach you a little bit of Welsh if you like. However, there are various pronunciations of South African names that people from these British Isles, like myself, aren't entirely able to do. I'm not going to ask you to teach me because I think it would end up with me sounding particularly <laughs> silly. But what is the acceptable pronunciation if I am unable to make those particular sounds? Well, because I am close, I remember in South Africa we have 11 official languages, but what? I will 11 of them. I will teach you my home language, is the Kosa, okay. which is compri comprised from middle of many clicks, yeah. such Wait as... For the calls. Okay. So would be like for example when you're saying your nela ngolo our chited there's yes. a there's a click to your name yes which is marked by an x so you'll say cry but where does the go ngolo ngolo your nela ngolo i think i'll practice that when the <laughs> microphone isn't live but uh, I will always do my best <laughs> to pronounce the names correctly so next time we'll spend some time together before kick off Absolutely. right Back underway with England then, Holly Thorpe, we're in number 22 and now England with some field position here. Again, Another injury, they're starting to fall now, such as the physicality of this game. Legs. And the last thing we want is for any player to leave the field injured in a game like this. There's such a great opportunity for both teams, for these England under 20s, the next generation of Red Roses. Time's clearly off. It must be said, have had a fantastic autumn international period themselves, really asserting their dominance against New Zealand. And getting great crowds as well. People are really getting behind the game in England. They are in France as well. Some of the crowds at the France internationals have been wonderful. And more and more countries are following suit. There was a good crowd at the Cardiff game, actually, wasn't there? Absolutely, possibly the biggest crowds we've ever played in in quite some time. Even the French crowds came out in numbers. It was Thank so fantastic because it speaks to the, the, the rate of the growth of women's rugby globally. And it's just massive, massive, massive. And I'm so excited to be part of such a, such a, great, uh, such a great revolution. What I think, so, do you know, revolution is a great word, actually. And what I think is lovely is because of the size of the, the sport at the moment, this is something that because it's such a behemoth is, is lacking in men's test match rugby you're really able to build a bond with the supporters hey. absolutely i think so because uh, the supporters are they follow us they know our backstories Man, they know how hard we have to work they know all the all the great stuff that we do and they they, they seem to understand what we're what we're working on because we're all about inspiring the next generation of young women throughout the world globally and i think that connects to the spectators and speaks to their hearts and they're more than happy to come and see all of us now that will be the end of the road hopefully that injury is not nearly as serious as it looks it's never nice to see players afternoon evening match ended prematurely just give more space but the, just to pick up on the back of what he said there for all of you watching on the south african rugby youtube join the adventure if you if you're a regular follower of the women's game then great great to have you on board but if you're new you're watching for the first time you're enjoying then get on board there's so much to be excited about absolutely absolutely so much to be excited about so much to see and experience another good scrum from south africa but the ball at the back for england Bo robinson there at first receiver good line hit there by millie whitehouse England on the edge of the 22, bang in front of the post. Everyone lining up on the left-hand side. Oof, that ball to Maisie Allen. Who has another runner into traffic and South Africa ripped the ball again. They're inside their own 22 this time though. Another 
and they're not in there for long and it's a good offload South Africa looking to keep the ball alive but a good tackle there Tory Sellers the replacement scrum half making a nuisance of herself thank you Jacobs the captain in the black scrum cap she's been so energetic always held relentless pace in the number seven jersey Wait. Stride on. Now Schneiders. Oh, that's a fabulous ball. And the offload again to Malinga. Oh, Malinga gets away from the tackle. Straight through Lobby Bond. The cover comes across from Hesketh, but she can't get there. And Malinga gets her second. And it is another wonderful finish. It's a fifth try for South Africa. Ayanda Malinga gets her second. Surely now South Africa out of sight if they weren't already. Blistering pace from Ayanda Malinga. Straightforward. That's where she goes and she knows exactly. What I like here is once she got through the tackle of Lobby Bond, the realisation, she turns inside, looks at the support line and thinks, I'm going all the way myself. She definitely has faith in her heels and she knows how fast she is and she can be. Two tries in six minutes in the second half for South Africa. Easier kick this time for Cilias, although it is straight into the wind. <laughs> she gets her third conversion. South Africa, 31, England uh, nil. Just over go. 10 minutes to go. Another look at this, it's another attack from deep, but... South Africa do so well here is absorb the contact, then get the offload and the that pace that Malinga hit the line out there. <laughs> Thank you. Tired England defenders who've had to do so much tackling from heavy carries. And then when you add that kind of pace to tired legs, there's usually only one outcome. Which is a try. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, as a prop forward, you always back yourselves pace-wise. Uh, you and Malinga in a straight line race. <laughs> I think I think it would be a tie. It would be a tie. <laughs> it would be by just by milliseconds of a difference between myself and Malinga. <laughs> There's a very big reason why I'm in the front row and she's not, by the way. <laughs> but I bet she'd be a terrible scrummager. <laughs> I think we all have different roles to play and I think she plays her role fantastically well. Well, you've got a role to play today that you're about to find out about. On 75 minutes, I'm going to ask you to select the player of the match. Got you, got you. Uh, and I, oh, hello, England have got an opportunity here inside the 22. Can they get something on the scoreboard to reward their endeavour? Kelsey Clifford there, good carry from Clifford, great field position in England's best opportunity of the match so far. Oh England desperately close, you can throw a blanket over pretty much all of the team although Holly Thorpe is holding her position out wide, as is Georgina Tasker. But England camped on the South Africa line. They had an opportunity similar to this in the first half, but South Africa held strong. Now players out to the left-hand side. Here's Robinson. And England over. Great patience showed by the England side on the try line. Massive defensive effort from South Africa as well. But uh, I'm sure the English team will be very happy to finally, finally cross over the try line. That is just reward for England in the last 10 minutes because 
It almost feels like a reward for the defensive effort because they've conceded five tries, but they really have been tested by this very strong South Africa side. Great vision there by Sellers, saw that it wasn't on on the right and instead went to the left and Ella Lovibon crashed over. Great line from the Bristol Bears, number 12. England 5, South Africa 31. So yeah, 75, 76 minutes. I want some candidates, <laughs> then I want a winner. I've got, uh, I've got quite a few. It's a bit of a tough, uh, tough call between the two that I have in mind. But uh, okay. let me let me ponder upon it for a little bit more time. Kick to take them up to seven. Drift, drifts across the face. England five, South Africa thirty-one. into the final 10 minutes of what has on the face of it been quite a one-sided game but there's been plenty of entertainment and plenty of positives from both sets of players just a look at this nice short ball and the dummy in lovely bond big strong ball carrier noticed the mismatch and crashed over jackie Sillias to get us back underway deep kick into the 22 And England have coughed the ball up straight away. Makua with the interception. Great work from the lock forward. Just a second time in box colours. And Skultz, replacement hooker in the scrum cap. Oh, that's been spilled forward. Unam Torse getting too excited. And then eventually South Africa conceding the penalty. Went beyond and swept back. So let's talk candidates then before you give me a top two. Who's impressed you today? Who do you think's had a great game? Oh, hold that thought. Pick that thought back up. Who's <laughs> impressed you today? Well, I've given it some thought and uh, I've got uh, Sizo P. Lasolonzi on my radar. I've got Sima Namba, who's been incredible in the game. Donnell Snyder's as well. So I've uh, got my work cut out for me in terms of picking up a winner. Okay, we've narrowed it down to a few as so we approach the final five minutes. Another scrum. Crouch. I'll let you get excited about this. Beautiful stuff. <laughs> In the winter sunshine as well. Must be said, glorious conditions for the time of year when it can be wet and horrible. Instead, it's a great surface here at London Irish Rugby Club here at Hazelwood. Good rugby too. There's Lobby Bond. The try score. Trying to get over the game line. So you've got Robinson started at scrum half. Now at outside half. And here's Holly Thorpe. Oh, cover tackle coming in from Namba. And then Silias thinks she spotted a gap in behind. But England chase back. They're going to be just outside their own 22 again. And a good chase by Malinga. Two tries but still the energy to lead the chase. Jemima Moss. And South Africa set the green wall again. They're coming up quickly. Tasker with the tackle inside the final five minutes. Maisie Allen, the captain. Still working hard. Big shift from the back rower. Royash has to chase that across and now find Schneiders. Who fancies this? Oh, it's a good tackle on Schneiders and the offload as well. South Africa playing heads up rugby. And winning the penalty as a result. Oh, Royash has gone quickly. She's gone really quickly. And Royash is going to get the sixth try for South Africa. Checked with the referee. She was okay to go. And like all good scrum halves do, taps, goes, catches the opponents flat-footed. Unplayable at times. 
and you said she'd had a different dynamic that's exactly what she's done and she's got a five pointer as a reward absolutely she's lifted the pace of the game quite tremendously and she did not hesitate took the quick tap and went for gold over the try line six tries three conversions possibly four and after we have this Cilia's conversion attempt I'd like you to play with the match please the opportunity to go four from six from the tee. The couple that she's missed have been very difficult. Looks a very promising young kicker, both off the tee and out of hand. Just her third appearance in the colours of the box. And it's good. 38-5. Great kick from Sirius. She's slotted, slotted in quite effortlessly, which brings me to player of the match. Yes. That is, it's a tough choice. You know, we've seen, you know, Libby being fantastic, but I'm going with Sizopila Solonzi today. So Solonzi, number eight, hard graft, hard carries, great tackles. Big, big innings on her part. Fantastic turnovers. Her work rate is phenomenal. And she's given us some very good try scoring opportunities. And one for the forwards club. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> forwards for the win. <laughs> Congratulations, Cesar Solonzi, the number eight, the player of the match today. And when there have been so many strong performances in spring box jerseys, that is no mean feat. So final 90 seconds on our clock. But remember, it's not linked in with the referee's watch, so there may be a little bit more. Maybe some opportunities for some more scores. But wherever you've been joining us around the world, thank you for tuning in to this one. This is England under 20s versus South Africa. We're not in the far side, we haven't got Okay, reset. South African women's rugby going in the right direction, make no mistake about it. And they have that incredible test match to look forward to on the 27th of November at Twickenham. Not too far from here at London Irish against the Barbarians. I mean, the Barbarians team hasn't been announced yet, but a few names have snuck through. It's very exciting, isn't it? Absolutely exciting, and, uh, and I cannot even put it into words how how much we look forward to actually playing the Barbarians team. You know, one of my favourite players, the, uh, the Beast, Mtawarira, has, oh. has featured in the, yes. in the Barbarians team, and uh, as someone who looks very, uh, very highly up to him, I look forward to doing the same too. So exciting, exciting honor. stuff. Massively, massively honoured to to be able to do that. He was on a podcast last week, a British rugby podcast um, called the Good, Good, the Bad and the Rugby. He seems like a heck of a guy. But anyway, we digress. Final few seconds then. South Africa en route to a very convincing win. But is there more shine to put on it? Good pick up there from Malinga. Her and Namba, the two wingers, have linked up ever so well. I think Namba's work rate has been phenomenal today. She's been fantastic. She's the busiest. She's the shortest. She's just a firecracker of a little player. Some big carries from the forward. The first from Yonela Ngolo. Now Amate Nyoba. Both of them in the front row. Schneider's lovely pass off the left hand. possibly last move for the day you reckon well he's checking the watch I think we'll have the opportunity so five in the line out okay let's go it's last play so we've still got time for this Sorry, England, we're just going to wait and let her put her boot back on, please. I did see someone's boot go flying out the back. I, th I think that it came off, <laughs> and then somebody <laughs> threw it halfway yeah, across the That would be the tight end uh, boot, Amal She's having too much fun, so much that the boot flew off. <laughs> well, another strong carry. I hope she's got that boot done up tight. Well, England pinch it, and it is through Maisie Allen. 
Yeah, mate, thank you. Being a thorn in the side like all good open side flankers are. Oh, and then flying up, you've got straight on. Another good performance in the engine room. High energy stuff. And they're looking to run it from their own 22. Tackle Schneider's release. making the tackle. Georgina Tasker in there adding weight. And Tori Sellers feeding the ball. Off green. And then Thorpe tackled into touch. And that takes us to full time. South Africa, six tries here at London Irish. England with the consolation. We talk about the positives, but most of them have come from Springbok jerseys. We have seen players with one cap, two caps, three caps in their early 20s, all across the pitch, really put their hands up for selection and show that Springbok women's rugby is in rude health. It's going places. And they're putting the rest of the rugby world on standby. A very impressive 80 minutes. And you guys in the first team, or what is considered to be the first team, you'll be put on notice. There are some young players who are coming for the spots. It's a big, healthy squad of talent. And I think people are going to stand up and, and pay attention because this England team, yes, it's the under-20s, but they're all Premier 15s players. And that's a comfortable win. Absolutely, I think this is fantastic, fantastic display of women's rugby today. There's great continuity within both sides in terms of developing young players and grooming them into fully fledged international players. We've seen that from the Springbok side and uh, you know it's just really, really exciting and the level of competition that we have internally is one that is healthy and that is conducive of actually growing our brand of, of women's rugby which is South Africa and I think as you correctly put um, you know Springbok women is definitely definitely a force to be reckoned with and uh, we look forward to getting into the major competitions of, of world uh, rugby. Well, do you know what? We've got a couple more minutes while the players uh, shake hands and then we're going to look at the highlights. But, World Cup. I mean, what? It's obviously it's the biggest tournament in the world and different teams have different expectations. But to be a part of it and to wear the badge on your chest and to represent your country and to be the best that you can be, it doesn't get much better than that, right? It, it truly, truly doesn't get any better than that. It's the biggest honor and responsibility that one can be bestowed upon by their nation. And for us to be able to wear that badge with pride and to represent our nation in the biggest stage of them all, uh, the Women's World Cup is an absolute privilege and an honor, almost a once in a lifetime opportunity, which is why we are so keen to grab it with both hands and to use it to, to the best of our abilities. Well, a nice moment out there on the pitch as well. The two teams joining together for a photo, for a memory. Are you going to, do you want to go and be in there? This, I just wanted to point out to you and the viewers at home, in fact, all over the world, that this is what rugby is all about. It's about the friendships, the lifelong friendships, the relationships, the camaraderies, and the joy that rugby Look, brings run and be to in all. That picture. Go, 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 <laughs> BB, go. Absolute pleasure. I think it's important that you're, that you're in that. Right, quick, run, 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 run. Oh, that was Bibi. She was incredible company. Thanks to her and thanks to Zinke for their, uh, for their company. Ah, she's got out there. And there is the picture as well. Superb. Um, while they're going through that, let's have a look at the tries then because South Africa scored six. And this one seems a long time ago. This was the first one. Van Rensburg getting over off a short ball. She left the field with an injury. And I think anybody who's watched this game will hope that that is not an injury that lasts long. It's her first season playing 15 aside rugby. And she has been, well, certainly talented, certainly has plenty to offer. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing where her journey continues to. This was the second try. It came off the back of a carway break down the middle. She ran straight over Kershaw and Donnell Schneiders got on the end of the move. Good finish in the corner. Schneiders then moved to 10 in the second half and another of the very talented young players. Just her third appearance in a South Africa jersey. And there she is getting the ball off Van Rensburg, round the outside. Ashida gave chase, nearly made the tackle into touch. April Ashida, the young DMP winger, 
showed some moments for England as well. Now, this is the pick of the bunch. Van Rensburg on the wraparound, up over halfway, still with the defender to beat. Steps off the right foot there, and look at this handoff. Abby Kershaw forced her wide, couldn't do anything about the five points, but that chase from Kershaw managed to keep it to just five, so it was 19-0 at half-time. But let's have a look at this try again, an absolute beauty. Kawe, inside ball, and then the 10 getting around the outside of the 10, Van Rensburg around the outside of Duffy. And just that skill set there, just to swap the ball from the right hand to the left hand to make the right-handed handoff, then back into the right hand to take it away from Kershaw. Top draw stuff from Van Rensburg. Then into the second half. More forward dominance as we go through the try lights here. Just have a look at this, the celebrations, the South African song being sung with the England players. Truly beautiful moments. There have been some kit swaps as well, all the South African players now in England hats. Now, these are lovely moments. What Bibi said, this is what rugby is all about. So Malinga with the handoff. Fabulous try from her. She threatened to do it in the first half. She did do it in the second. And another one for the highlights reel. Look at this, the way they absorb the contact, then get the offload away. And Ayanda Malinga. Up to 25 points in a South Africa jersey now. And that's in five appearances as well. Yeah, just hitting that line so hard. Getting inside Lobby Bond, and as soon as that tackle was missed, there was only going to be one outcome. Even the chase from Nikita Prothero, one of the quickest players in the England side. Couldn't lay a glove on Ayanda Malinga. A crumb of comfort for England. And it would have been a shame for them to end with a zero next to their name because they've more than played their part in this match. It was the replacement scrum half there, Tory Sellers. Finding Flo Robinson, who found Ella Lovibond, who crashed over. Good inside centres finish. Look at it there. Great awareness of space. And a good flat pass there from Robinson as well to find Lovibon and the Bristol Bears inside centre. Gets a five pointer in England colours. And this was the final one. Nadine Royash, we were told how she changed the tempo. And again, it's just great awareness. Look how many England players were around her and absolutely helpless when she took that tap and go. Majority of the team. Penalties given, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight England players in shot, and absolutely nothing they can do about Nadine Royash. And that brings us to the end. South Africa on their way back into the changing rooms to get some warmth. England still out. Having photos, worth bearing in mind that this is an England under-20s team. Lots of promise, lots of talent, but ultimately coming up short today. Springbok women getting a big win on tour. They needed that win as well because they talk about building towards things and they are building towards something special, but you need wins. You need positives to cling on to, and this is a massive one for them today as they build towards that huge occasion, the Barbarians at Twickenham, on the 27th of November. Wherever you've joined us from around the world today, thank you. We hope you've enjoyed it. We've certainly enjoyed bringing to you full time here from London Irish. It's England under 20s, five Springbok women, 38.